Switch that. Welcome everyone to Indiana State University. Today's an exciting day for our athletic program as well as the Sycamore football program. Um, up here on the stage uh, with us today is our university president, Dr. Dan Bradley. Um, we also have our director of athletics, Sherard Klinkscales, and our brand new football coach will be introduced to you all very soon. Uh, we will begin today with uh, some comments from our uh, University President, Dr. Dan Bradley. Thanks, Ace, and uh, thanks everyone for uh, joining us this morning. It's, uh, it's a great day in Indiana, at Indiana State. I guess the only thing I could ask for is a little sunshine. As Sycamores, we're excited to welcome Kurt Mallory as head coach of the Sycamore football team. I'm looking forward to watching the Sycamores advance and to win championships under Coach Mallory's leadership. He brings a wealth of experience to our program and I'm confident he will recruit excellent student athletes who will be great representatives of Indiana State and will help us take our program to a new level. Our expectations for the program include returning to the playoffs and ensuring that our student athletes excel in the classroom graduate and are engaged in our community. I would now like to turn this event over to Athletic Director Sherrod Klingscales, whom I would like to personally thank for heading up this process and for taking over leadership of our athletic program in the last year. His enthusiasm has been a great, has meant a great deal to, to all of us. I would like to also thank the entire athletic department for all the great effort that they've put in over the last year working to help our athletes and our teams be successful. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon to all of you all. As Dr. Bradley said, this is such an exciting time to be a Sycamore. And uh, it's just uh, so good to be a part of something so special. I'd like to start out first by recognizing all of the former uh, football student athletes to please stand. <laughs> and our coach to please stand. Any of our former coaches, assistant coaches to please stand as well. You all represent where we are, where we were, and we're excited to see where we're going in the future. I'd also like to take the time to recognize uh, our selection committee. You know, a lot of times when these searches happen, high profile searches, ADs like to become recluse and kind of hide things and not tell what people what's going on. Well, I know that I can only do things with a great support staff, and so I really appreciate all their efforts, and I'd like to recognize them being a part of the process. Uh, Angie Lansing, Senior Associate AD, John Sherman, Senior Assistant uh, Athletic Director, Ace Hunt, our Director of Media Relations, Brian Bunning, our Assistant Athletic Trainer, Dave McManus, our Director of Sports Performance, Dr. Joe Sanders, our uh, Faculty Athletic Representative and uh, 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 for the School of uh, Business, <clears throat> uh, Michelle Stodden, Director of Athletic Studies, Cayman Mitchell, the Assistant Director of Athletic Studies, Joel McMullen, uh, Assistant Director of Compliance, Tanya Sawyer, our Compliance Coordinator, Jeremiah Turner, Director of Athletic Sponsorships and Sycamore Athletic Fund, Scott McGowan, Development Officer, Sycamore Athletic Fund, Dennis Dark, Facilities and Operations, and Dr. Alvaro Gorich, 
uh, College of Health and Human Sciences, and he is the chair of our athletic council. Thank you all so much for your participation. So as we began this process, I can tell you that we had a robust field of applicants. And it was so exciting because all of them knew that this was such a wonderful opportunity to be able to raise the bar here and do something special. You know, you talk about, you know, my criteria. What was I looking for? You know, obviously I want to recruit the Midwest. You know, I believe it's important to recruit young men that have an affinity for the Midwest, that understand what Indiana State Athletics is all about. Yes, I want a good X's and O's person. But more importantly, there's some things that I think that are important for a coach to be able to, 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 be able to do. As a former assistant coach, I know that the leader, leadership means everything. And so one of the first things that I looked for when I was looking for a coach was love of coaching and teaching, which are synonymous, to be an extension, that they do that as an extension of who they are uh, uh, as a person. I want someone that's going to develop boys into men who will lead their families and their communities modeling the right behaviors so that other young men can follow along. I want a coach that loves them enough to hold them accountable, hold them to a standard of achievement that they don't even think that they can reach. That's important. And then I will need a coach that really, really cares. You know, we often say, you know, we want to graduate our student athletes and give it a good experience, but what some coaches do a better job of that than others, and the student athletes know the difference. You know, in the age of social media, they all know what's real and what's not. And they want a coach that's going to hold them accountable, but at the same time understand them and then help them reach the higher, higher, higher heights that they really care. I need a coach with a strong support team. A coach is going to bring in uh, men that are going to be able to, to, do the, to, to model the same behaviors that they do. You know, everybody talks about winning and losing. It's important and it matters. And ultimately, we are judged by that that and graduation rates. But there's so much more when I'm looking for a coach to be able to get them out, to, to, get, to get out of the student athletes. You know, I was very fortunate uh, when I went down to Nashville, um, I got a chance to, to meet Lori. Um, Lori, in many ways, uh, Kurt's wife, is more vested than he is. You know, she's, she's tougher too, Kurt. <laughs> there's no question that Lori is the anchor of this team. Lori, I am blessed that Sam James and Margo, that you are joining us here at Indiana State and to be a part of the Terrell family. Thank you so much. You know, we talk about bloodlines. You know, those of you who know me, I was a major league scout for a better part of 10 years, and we always evaluate, evaluate, evaluate. And one thing I learned is that bloodlines find a way to play. So I'd be remiss not to recognize uh, Coach Mallory for all of his success as a former coach and his brothers. You know, bloodlines find a way to play, and I really believe that what you have done with all your sons and with Kurt is going to play out here. So thank you for your, for your mentorship and leading you men. Before I introduce Kurt, there's a toughness Kurt, is, Kurt, Kurt represents a toughness that refuses to accept mediocrity. Kurt is bound and determined to drive and succeed no matter the obstacles. He has a humble spirit. He honors tradition, respect, respects people, and has a faith that will stain him for all time. Please join me in welcoming the new leader of Indiana State Sycamore football, who I believe will, who will get us back to being nationally recognized program, Kurt Mallory.
Well, thank you. Uh, very honored to be the next head football coach at Indiana State University. Uh, it's truly an honor. Uh, my wife and I are extremely thrilled. Uh, before we get started, I, you know, I really want to thank uh, President Bradley, uh, Sherrard Clinksdales, and uh, the entire administration who he introduced. Uh, it was a long process, but I really enjoyed getting to know and getting to meet everybody. We've got some uh, family members here I want to recognize. Uh, I'm going to start with my wife, Lori. Uh, she's been uh, by my side at, at all times. And I know uh, her and I are uh, real excited to be here and uh, get started, and uh, I love you very much. Uh, <laughs> uh, my three kids, James, Sam, and Margo, they're right here in front. Wave your hands. I know they're very excited to be here and, uh, and get in school and, uh, and get ready to meet some friends and get involved in sports and so forth. Uh, my mother and father-in-law here made it over from De uh, Decatur, Illinois. Uh, really glad the support and love that they've given uh, Lori and I through all this. Jerry and Carol Hill. <laughs> my parents, uh, Bill and Ellie Mallory, still live in Bloomington, uh, Indiana, but they uh, made it up from uh, uh, Florida to be here, and uh, they mean everything to me, Bill and Ellie Mallory. I want to thank the Indiana high school coaches, especially the Wabash Valley coaches, for uh, the unbelievable support that I've gotten in the last couple weeks through this process and then getting hiring. Uh, it, it's been really, uh, really humbling. And, and, and I know that's going to be the backbone of our program, although we've got to go out and uh, expand as we will. But uh, the Indiana high school coaches are obviously very, very critical and uh, the success that we're going to have here at Indiana State. So I want to thank them for the support. I want to thank the head football coaches that Lori and I were uh, fortunate to work for. I was hired by Bill Lynch at Ball State University, and that was the great, greatest football staff that I was ever a part of, and Coach Huber's here today. But, uh, and then I went and worked at Central Michigan for Mike DeBoard. And then from there, I went to uh, Indiana University under Jerry DiNardo. From there, I went to University of Illinois under Ron Zook, to University of Akron to with Rob Ionello, and then back to my alma mater at University of Michigan under Brady Hoke, and then just most recently at the University of Wyoming with Coach Craig Bull. So I thank them for everything that they did for me, the support, and what they did for Lori and I. Now for the easy part. That was the hard part, getting through the thank yous, but again, it's great to be back in Indiana. This is our home. This is where my children were born. This is where I met my wife. This is where I went to high school. And this is where my wife and I got married. And this is where her and I want to be to raise a family and win championships. <laughs> Excited about the future of the program. I've got a chance to meet these young men to the right of me. And I'm really impressed. I know they're hungry. And I know we're going to get this done, and I'm really excited to be part of the family. And I've really got a chance here to meet them and get down. And I haven't met with everyone, but I've met with most of them. And that was, almost, that was one of the first things I wanted to do was get a chance to get to know them. The philosophy here is very simple. You win with people. And that's how I was raised. You're never going to do it alone. It's always going to be about we and us. And it's about people. People make a place. And this place has got great people, and we're so proud to be here. When I met Sherrard, I was excited. I got a chance to meet him and his staff, and I came away so impressed because the commitment level was so high. And I knew that the promise here for these young men to be academically successful and athletically successful was there. And as much as I wanted the job on December 17th, I wanted it even more after that. But after meeting the people that were gonna be involved, I was really excited about when he gave me the opportunity and I just found in my favorite restaurant, and that's the Cracker Barrel, because that's where he told me where I was coming. So that'll always be my favorite restaurant. <laughs> but there's great promise here. There's great promise for these young men to be academically successful, to be athletically successful. And that's what most, is most important about this university. 
As excited as I am to be the head football coach, I'm even more excited that the staff that's going to come with me. Sherrard talked about it. These are going to be men with high character, men that I know as husbands, men as I know as fathers, and men as I know as teachers. These are high character men. They're going to be great role models and mentors for these young men. So I'm very excited to get going with those guys, and I know they'll be on campus shortly. We had three objectives when I got on campus. I landed in Indianapolis. First thing I did was I drove to the stadium and I went and met these young men as a team. I couldn't wait. That was the number one thing I wanted to do was get in front of these guys and talk to them and let them know where we're going with the direction we were going to be headed. The second objective that I wanted to hit was I wanted to build on the team that we had and keep recruiting. There's no excuses. We're going to have a great recruiting class. This class that we're going to put in with these young men is going to be a great compliment to them. We will have a great recruiting class. So I hit the road, I hit the phones, and we're going to put together a, a darn fine group to add to these men. And the third thing I wanted to do is I wanted to start meeting with these individuals and get to know them. And so I've met with 45 of them. I still have about 20-some to go. But I'll finish up with that this weekend. But I wanted to get in front of them and get to know them and continue to bring, uh, build the relationships that we've already started. There will always be these three expectations, and these will never change. They will never change while I'm here and while we're all together at Indiana State University. We will represent this university in a first-class manner. They will earn a degree, and we will win the Missouri Valley Championship. The vision is very clear. I see these young men, whether it's next year, whether it's whether they're in the program, that they walk across that stage. They're holding on to a diploma in their hand. And on their ring finger is a Missouri Valley Championship ring. That is the clear vision that we will have here at Indiana State. And lastly, I'm excited, extremely excited. My wife and I couldn't be more happier to be where we're at today. We're excited to be here, we're excited and ready, and we're excited to build a championship program. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll now field uh, questions from the media. We'll start with Todd Golden of the Terre Haute Tribune Star. Kurt, welcome to Terre Haute. Thank you. Um, sorry. <laughs> First of all, you mentioned December 17th. When you're sitting there and you see this job open up, what, <laughs> what about it appealed to you straight out of the, out of the shoot? Well, I think, number one, the timing. Uh, you know, the timing was right. Uh, you know, anytime you're going for a head coaching job, it's about a fit and it's about timing. Uh, the timing is right for my family and I. Uh, the fit, uh, I'm from Indiana. This is where I'm from. I'm a Hoosier. This is where my family's from. These are where my friends are from. And uh, so you had to, the timing couldn't be better and the fit couldn't be better. And I uh, couldn't be happier to be back. Or Rick Simler from WTHI TV. You, you speak of being a Hoosier. What do you know about Indiana State football? I know your dad and, uh, knows a lot about it and with Coach Rates. What do you know about Second War football? You know, when, when we moved to Bloomington, Indiana in 1983, Coach Rates had Indiana State's program going to playoffs. And they went two years in a row. So when we got here, my dad was trying to build that championship program, and it was Indi Indiana State at the time uh, that was going to the playoffs and doing what they were doing. I had a lot of friends that came to Indiana State and played here, so I, w I came over here quite a bit, followed the program, uh, knew the times that they had and, and, uh, and the success that they had a few years ago. But when I first came to Indiana, it was Coach Rates and his program and his team that really opened my eyes that uh, football in Indiana is for real. 
or Todd Golden again. Um, speaking of your father, um, obviously he had great success at, at Indiana. How close are you philosophically in terms of both, in terms mainly of on the field type things, are you to uh, your dad who, who built a very uh, renowned uh, style of play at Indiana? Well, I think there's a, uh, a direct correlation why my brother, Doug, uh, who's with the Atlanta Falcons right now, and you know, I want to wish him the best of luck as he's getting ready for the Super Bowl. And uh, put that out there. I know we have a Patriot fan in here, uh, John Sherman, but go Falcons. Uh, my brother Mike, you know, growing up uh, and myself watching my father coach, uh, it wasn't a job, it was a passion. It was easy for all three of us to get into that profession because we watched what he did. There's some former players of him, of his here today that are close friends of mine, Matt Bomba and Scott McGowan, but I know what he did for them and uh, changed their lives. And uh, so it was easy for me to choose this profession and, uh, as Sherard said, make young men into men. And uh, I like to, you know, I'll, I'll never claim to be my father because my father's the best coach that I've ever been around in my, in my whole life. But uh, I certainly uh, would love to strive to be compared to him. Coach, uh, you, you talked about already being out with the high schools, and I talked to several coaches in the area, but also statewide have already commented how much they've talked to you and how much they like you. What's been the response you've received from the coaches around the state, high school coaches? Well, you know, it's, it's relationships. Uh, I've recruited Indiana for years, um, played here. So a lot of these high school coaches uh, were coaching when I played. And so I've known them for a long time. Uh, I've always had the... Um, Luxury, I guess, to always recruit the state of Indiana to get around the state. And uh, the best advice I ever got was just be yourself. That was what my father always instilled in me and my brothers and my sister. And uh, so I've built relationships and just going in there, it's just so good to see familiar faces. Uh, I was able to go, and I, I can't mention the names of the schools, but uh, going into some of these schools, I, I, I've known these guys. I, I recruited a young man. I went into a, a school yesterday where I was in the home of this young man. He's coaching in high school. So there's just so many things there that has uh, it, really been fun and really been exciting as I've been back. Kurt, uh, your most recent coach you worked for, head coach you worked for, Craig Bull, was, of course, set the bar in the Missouri Valley Conference uh, uh, when he was at North Dakota State. What did he tell you about the conference? What did he tell you about Indiana State? Well, the first thing he said was, you know, Indiana State was the only team that beat us. And <laughs> I told him I knew that. You know, I'd heard, <laughs> I'd heard the stories, so uh, but I knew all about it. You know, I'd heard the stories so many times. And, and uh, of course, working on the defensive side at Wyoming, there's a lot of uh, guys on that, that side of the ball that uh, wanted to let me know that, that uh, it was the offense that gave up the points and not the defense because they threw two interceptions for touchdowns. But uh, nonetheless, uh, Coach Bull uh, was a tremendous. Ultimately, there was probably some type of connection, uh, whether they were from Indiana, whether they were from Illinois, whether they were from California. And uh, then I asked him about their family. And then I asked him, uh, what have you done up to today? What can you tell me about yourself? and just let them talk. And uh, I think the thing that I came away with was the honesty. Um, heard their background, heard their story, heard the good, heard the bad. And uh, I wasn't perfect, nor were they. Um, but I, that's how you build relationships, communication, listening to each other talk. Hi, Coach Jim. You talked about going around the state and talking to some of the recruits. What was your message to a lot of those guys that, you know, that signed on with another coaching staff? What did you tell them about why it would be important to stay with you? You know, the, when I got here, the thing that was m most impressive were, was the, you know, the remaining staff and, and the job that they did. A lot of these guys played at Indiana State, and, and they have a lot of pride for this university, and I can't compliment them enough for what they did. I go in there, I talked to them very similar to I talked to the team. I was honest with them. I told them the direction that the program was going. 
in the beliefs and the expectations that we're going to have. And I know that they were excited to hear that. And the thing that I saw is that there was already a bond of the recruits that are involved and the recruits that are committed. They've already built relationships within that class, and they've already built relationships with the guys on our football team. So I was tremendously impressed. Kurt, um, when you signed the contract, you know, tell me about just personally what that meant to you to, I'm sure, fulfill an aspiration to be a head coach. What was that moment like? Well, it was very gratifying, obviously, uh, personally. But, uh, you know, I, things have gone kind of fast. I, uh, you know, I, everything's been kind of, uh, you know, on full speed ahead. But I, I can't tell you how excited I am. Uh, you know, when I was told at the Cracker Barrel, I didn't know whether to jump up on the table and start screaming. But uh, or to start crying, but uh, I know uh, I know I was uh, extremely excited. I was driving down I-70. I was crying like a baby. I you know I didn't want to call anybody, but the people driving by. I don't know how fast I was going. I might have been pulled over for going 20 miles an hour. And I got to Indy, but I, I I can't tell you how excited I am to be back in Indiana. This, again, this is where my family. You know, we're just extremely excited to be back. Uh, Indiana State is our home. Uh, we just can't be more happier to be part of this family. Coach, you talked about meeting with the players and going back and forth and their honesty. They experienced one winning season, a group of these guys, mm -hmm. in, in a playoff, but it hasn't been around here very often. I'm sure you saw just how bad they want to experience that again. How much do you want to let them experience that again, not just next year, but every year here at Indiana State? You know, the most gratifying thing is, you know, to, to do something that, you know, people say you can't do. And, uh, you know, I remember sitting and listening to Coach Bull talk about, you know, we're going to beat Boise State, we're going to beat Colorado State, and we're going to beat San Diego State, and we're going to play in the, we're going to win the Mountain West Championship. And that uh, had never been done in a consistent level at the University of Wyoming for a long, long time. And uh, there was more, there was nothing more gratifying than to play in that championship game this year against San Diego State. And uh, although we came up short, uh, we did it the right way. We did it the consistent way. And, uh, you know, the vision I have for these young men is why you coach. And uh, to earn a degree, to represent the university, and to win championships. And, and I know that's the direction we're going, but it's going to take everybody. It's going to take the administration. Cannot do it alone, and will not do it alone. We need these guys to be on board, which they are, and to get everybody going in the right direction. But there is never, ever anything more gratifying than to see these young men accomplish what they're going to accomplish here shortly. Uh, sure, Art. I had a question. You had you had mentioned about bloodlines find a way to play. I just want to know uh, if you could expand on that and tell me why it's so important to hire somebody with with ties to Indiana, like like this family clearly has. Well, you know, typically <clears throat> when you're talking about you know just athletes themselves, I mean, just DNA, they figure out a way to to, to when they're around the game a lot, uh, they pick out some of the nu nuances to be successful. And coaching is no different. I mean, uh, Kurt's been around his father and his brothers all that time, and you know, coaching is a lot of different things that, that, that you pick up um, because you're around it. And so that's what I meant by that, that those type of things kind of, you know, through osmosis or what have you, they play, they, they play out, you know, and when, you're, when, when you're coaching or if you're playing. Anything else? All good? Uh, thank you, Dr. Bradley. Thank you, Sherard. And I'll welcome aboard once again, Coach Kurt Mallory, head coach of Indiana State Sycamores. Thank you. Another jersey shot? Oh, okay.